calculation of RSI has two parts. One is RS and one is RSI. Now, what is RS? It is basically the next topic is relative strength index, a complete beginner's guide. This is an indicator created by Jay Welder. Now, this is an indicator which basically oscillates between 0 to 100. One of the basic things which people look at is a reading above 70 is considered overbought, a reading below 30 is considered oversold. Now, this is also used for identifying the trend or the strength of the trend at times and also used to look at divergences. Now, we go towards how do we calculate RSI. Now, calculation of RSI has two parts. One is RS and one is RSI. Now, what is RS? It is basically average gains divided by average losses. Now, what does it compare is average gains over a number of days. So, basically, every day, say the index has moved up 100 points, 150 points, you divide it by the number of days. The number of days calculation is 14 days, which is generally used. Now, in simpler words, if I have to take this as first you calculate RS, then you calculate RSI. Moment you go to RSI, it becomes an oscillator between 0 to 100. Essentially, what it is trying to calculate is strength of the market at that point of time. If I were to make it much more simpler, say the index has moved up from say 10,000 to 12,000 over a period of 30 days compared to a movement of 10,000 to 12,000 over say 90 days. Obviously, the reading of the 30 days will come out to be higher. So what we are trying to do in RSI is to understand the strength. And now we look at how do we use RSI next. So there are three basic ways we use RSI. First, RSI is a confirmation. Now, for example, the stock has broken into an uptrend. Is the RSI also trending up? That confirms the strength of the move. In the same way, the stock has broken down. RSI gives you a confirmation as well. The second is to use it as overbought and oversold. Now, this is where the simple tool which most people use is a reading above 70 is considered to be overbought. A reading below 30 is considered to be oversold. If you were to use it theoretically, it will not be the best way. The theoretical approach is to sell overbought and buy oversold. It does not really work. We'll look in, into it with examples. The next one and the most important one is using RSI divergences. Now, what is a divergence? For example, like I said, RSI is an indication of the strength. So consider an index is at 10,000. The RSI is at 25. The index falls to 9,000. Ideally, if the price has gone lower, the strength should also have a lower reading. But consider at 9,000, RSI is at 30. What does it tell you? The market is making lower bottoms. The RSI is making higher bottoms. Now, this is what is we call as a divergence. This is called a positive divergence which generally gives an indication of a possible big reversal. And it gives you some of the best trading setups with a low risk and a high reward. Now we look at all these three things with examples. RSI as a confirmation indicator is pretty simple. So we'll rather focus on the price action. The second part is overbought and oversold. Now this is where I look at it from a perspective as the way I look at it. Now, if you look at RSI, it is basically zero to 100. 70 is overbought. In some index, it could be 75, 80, which could be the majority of the times it has been overbought. At times, it could be 20 on the lower end for different indices because every index has different components and different volatility. So what I do is, I take, a, take an index, take a last 10-year data on a daily chart of RSI 14. Now, when we look at this whole data of 10 years plus, what do we notice? So look at this chart in front of you. We are looking at the upper end of it, which is basically what I call as the euphoric band. So over the last 10 years in Nifty, majority of the up readings have come around, come around the 80 to 85 mark. So this is a price area along with RSI, which we call as the euphoric band. Then we try to see what has happened at 80, 85 RSI. And then what do we notice out of the last 10 years, this has maybe happened say roughly three to four times. In 2004, it gave a good 15 to 30% correction. There were a couple of higher tops after that. In a lot of cases, as we see in 2007-8, the RSI reading came in in 2007-8, which is the third instance. You'll see two more tops before a big fall. In 2006 also, it gave you a 15 to 30% correction. So what do we notice at RSI 80-85? It may not be an exact signal of a topping out, but it's a good early signal telling you this is an euphoric band 
where you want to be out of the markets or increasing cash. Now we look at the other side of it, which is basically the lower end of it, which is we call as the pessimistic band. Now, when we look at the last 10 year data, what do we notice is out of this various instances, majority of the lower area came around 20 to 25 RSI. Now let us look at this chart back in 2000 as well as in 2004. If you notice at 2025 RSI, it made a major bottom and we saw a nice rally. Again in 2004, we saw a nice rally after that. Then we look at further in 2008. Now here it is interesting. In the first fall in January 2008, there was a 15 to 20 percent bounce, but it did not hold. But there were a couple of bounces from that same area. So although it was an early signal, it gave you a bounce, did not make a major bottom. But if you go to 2008, again, it goes to 2025 RSI. It makes a major bottom. It takes a few months of consolidation before a new trend starts. Then you go to 2011, you will see a 2025 RSI. It takes a couple of months to bottom out, but it becomes a major bottom. And you would see the same thing in various time frames. So the next start is 2016 bottoms, 2016, 17 demonetization bottom. You can look at the 2020 bottoms of COVID. So what does it tell you at 2025 RSI is the zone where you want to invest. So to simply put a very nice signal, which we look at in terms of Nifty or any index is find out the euphoric band, find out the pessimistic band. So, you know, places where you want to increase cash, places where you want to deploy cash. Now, this may not have as many instances, but those will be some of the most important times. And this you can use on various indices. It could be Nifty, it could be Bank Nifty, it could be Dow Jones, it could be S&P 500. The steps are simple. Take a 10 year data, daily RSI 14 and look out for the bands. Now we go to the next part, which is the normal band of RSI, which is basically 70 by 30. Now, the problem here is if you look at this example, which I take recently of 2020-2021, RSI touched 70, it paused a little but continued to drift higher. Again in 2021, it touched 70, then the markets continued to go higher. The same thing happened in 2014 as well. So indices and stocks can remain overbought for much longer than you think. And many a times the first breakout after multi years or after a major consolidation phase, the RSI would go to 70, but it would not be overbought. It could be start of a new trend. So always remember overbought can stay much longer. Now, the problem is consider this, you are doing it in a stock and you go short at a stock at 100, it could go to 250 also and remain overbought. So that's the reason we, try to look for RSI in indices and not for stocks. If I have to go beyond index, maybe I will look at it only at the top 20, 25 liquid stocks. Because if you go wrong in it, it can continue, the trend can continue much longer. At, and at times you could miss major opportunities just because stopping yourself because the markets are overbought. So as a rule, I look at RSI only for indices. Now, the last and the most important part, which is looking at divergences on indices. Now, I'll take this by an example itself. So this is a chart for Nifty in 2012. Now, if you look at it, there is a bottom here and there is another bottom on the Nifty. But if you look at the RSI, the RSI is higher. So what does it tell you? Lower bottom on Nifty, higher bottom on RSI. That's a classical positive divergence. At that point of time, the chances of a bounce back become higher. And at that point of time, what do you want to do? You want to look at price action reversal confirmations or take a bet with a risk reward stop loss in place and then see what happens. This particular instance, the index went from 4,500 to 5,100 in a jiffy. Now let us look at another example. This is in 2016. Now, if you see, even in a downtrend, every time there was a positive divergence, there was a good enough bounce. Then again, in December 2016, as you see, the bounce was there, but was it not as much as you would have wanted it. But if you see February 2016, you can see two classical bottoms, almost doji candlestick patterns, where RSI 
is classically showing a higher bottom. And then see what happens. The Nifty goes from 7,000 to 7,800 and starts a new trend. The same thing you would notice in 2017. Post demonetization, we had a bottom, then another almost similar bottom, but RSI was much more higher. So this bullish positive divergences give you some of the major reversal periods. And what we've noticed is a lot of bottoms actually show you positive divergences on RSI. Now, now we go on the opposite side of it, which is where we look at negative divergences. What would it be? The exact opposite. Nifty makes on higher tops, RSI makes lower tops. So look at this example in 2006. You see three tops. The first one when RSI touches overbought, then another top and then the third one and then finally it falls off. The difference in uh, bullish positive divergence and a bearish divergence is on the upside it takes some more time to top out and it is not a quick fall. But the principles remain the same. You need to wait for price action to confirm a lot more on a negative divergence. We can take another example out here. Now this is the classical top in 2007. You see three more tops roughly by a margin of say 2 to 5% higher than the first top. And then what do you see? After the bearish divergences, there is a correction and it keeps on getting deeper. So what do you notice in both these instances is that bearish divergences also play out really well. At times, it could take a lot more time. Now, another example, you see it on your screen in 2010. In this case, there are only just two tops, a classic bearish divergences. You can see RSI is much more lower on the second top and it creates a major top in 2010. The same thing works out in 2015 at 9,000 Nifty. You have a top around that 8,800 mark, the next top at 9,125. RSI is classically lower creates a major top. So to summarize, if you look at the divergences, we looked at it in the example from 2006 to 2020 also. We know divergences work really well. So what are we looking out for in RSI most of the times is divergences and the big pattern which I spoke about, the euphoric band and the pessimistic band. So for me personally, RSI is only on indices and the only two things which I'm looking out for is are we at the euphoric band or the pessimistic band? If we go there, we get some really good opportunities to invest. And on a different time scale, normally if we go to 70, 75 RSI and there are divergences. Now divergences will give me some of the best trades for the short term, as well as at times this could also be a long term top or a long term bottom. So try to use RSI not in the classical way of 70 by 30, but via these bands and divergences.